What is going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Some Man's Comics. We have in Turkey Week. I hope everyone's ready for Thanksgiving. Hope everyone has a safe Thanksgiving. And I hope everyone, I don't care if you practice social distancing or not, do what you got to do. Love your family, but be smart about it and be safe. But this is the three up, three down. That's right. We're talking about those comic book market trends. Jack, are you ready for Thanksgiving? I don't know. It feels like it crept up on us this year, but it's coming. So it really doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, a lot of things uh, are like that. Certainly we're talking about local comic shop week this week. So, uh, you know, it, it, things are popping up out of nowhere. These these dates, they just don't feel real this year. Right. I do want to say real quick before we get into the upward trends last week on three up, three down, we announced that we were going to do a giveaway for Canto. All you had to do to enter that giveaway was basically subscribe to Lala Schultz's YouTube channel, number one Canto fan, and then comment on last six, three up, three down. I subscribed to Lala and you were entered the win. So we put those in random.org, random list, randomized the list. And the one that came out on top is going to be the winner. We're going to announce that name right now. So we are saying Joel Walters will win a copy of the Canto New York Comic Con. Let me say that better. <laughs> We'll win a copy of Canto to Holloman number one. This is the New York Comic Con exclusive variant. Awesome book. But we're going to do one more thing. She actually gave us issues number one and number two, both the New York Comic Con variants. So we're going to draw another name for issue number two, and that is MWK Direct. Both of you guys, congratulations. You won both of those copies. Please email your mailing address to simplemanscomics at gmail.com, and I'll get those out to you. But what we're here for, starting with those upward trends. The first one we got, Jack just kind of mentioned it. We got local comic shop day. And here we have those local comic shop day variants. A lot of people are talking about those. Yeah, well, if you look at uh, all the books releasing, um, you know, it, uh, for new comic book day this weekend, this is certainly not the Bolo show, but, um, you know, having prepared the list for this week and, and looking at what everybody's talking about, these local comic shop day books are, are pretty dominant this week as far as what people are paying attention to. Um, certainly, that Future State book is the most talked about, both positively and negatively. And there'll be a time and place to really fully get into that. But um, right now, uh, it, Local Comic Shop Day, I think, is a positive thing. It, with everything that we've got going on in the country, the pandemic and whatnot, and the restrictions and difficulties that local businesses are having, it's even more important to have things like this. And the publishers certainly went all, all out this year. Um, I think usually when we're looking at local comic shop, there's always two or three real winners, right? But this year, we're looking at books, whether or not they're immediately popping on the secondary market. Books like the Savage Dragon book, the Momoko Power Ranger book, Something's Killing the Children foil, um, you know, all are, are demanding attention. And really across the board, uh, I think but the publishers did a really, really good job with this year's local comic shop day offerings. And I think that this Wednesday, those are gonna kind of be the most um, talked about. And it's great that retailers get those sales. That's always good. Um, but really I, the hope is usually to bring in new customers um, and to kind of increase business. I hope they'll be able to do that, but do that, of course, as you said in the opening, safely. Yeah, I do want to say a little comic shop day variants. A lot of people are talking about them coming out this week, but we tried to bring them to your attention three weeks ago during the last call, talking about the final water cutoff. We mentioned all the books that were coming out for little comic shop day and to get in touch with your LCS to see if you could secure those copies. Some of you guys said you did. Kudos to you. But yes, those are some great books. But the next one that we're going to talk about trending upward this week this was one that caught some fire a little bit ago, but now we're seeing some heat again, and we're talking about that DMZ. Yeah, well, you know, now we've got the news just within the last week uh, that they are moving forward on production of uh, the uh, upcoming series with from HBO Max. HBO Max is hot. They're right. They're they're green lighting content left and right, and they're really going all in with the the Warner Brothers DC stuff, of course, with the natural AT and T connection. It, it, but this is a big deal. I mean, you've got the, the same director who is working on New Gods is going to be working on this. So you've got a natural kind of a DC Comics fit there. And 
it's I think it's something a space that a lot of us didn't think about is when the HBO Max thing happened. We knew like they're gonna go crazy with DC content, and it's why I'm really bullish on a lot of undervalued DC content. But you know, I don't think a lot of people thought about Vertigo and that there's a lot of really non superhero stories that will fit very nicely on an HBO platform. Streaming is the wave of the future. Um, the, certainly the big two seem right now like uh, Netflix and Amazon, Disney Plus and, and uh, HBO Max, I think are going to charge extremely hard, extremely fast. Um, so I'm excited about anything coming out on those platforms. I think when you got the, the, the combination of director, star, because Rosario Dawson is attached to this one. And, you know, we've seen the popularity of everybody anticipating her appearance on uh, uh, Mandalorian. Um, but, you know, I think when when she finally um, does appear, it's only going to she's only going to be her stars only going to rise. So going forward into um, uh, this property, I think she's going to be red hot. That combination plus HBO Max plus the director um, plus a low print run on number one, I think like seventeen eighteen thousand uh, on number one. So this isn't a book that's like everywhere already been a back issue a lot of people have been picking up because it garnered major reader buzz upon release right and talking about movie news that probably goes into our last one that we're going to talk about comics are heating up this has been a popular character for for probably the past three or four years but we're going to talk about shiri especially with black panther black panther 2 getting ready to go into production a lot of people are speculating that shiri is going to be the new black panther yeah, you would think she kind of has to. There was certainly some solid um, uh, uh, reports through reputable sources like Deadline um, and Variety that both Shuri and Mbaku would play elevated roles in this upcoming sequel. Now, you got to kind of read into that however you please. Um, but either way, we've seen Shuri's books across the board. I, I Of course, the first appearance but also her first appearance as Black Panther, um, the current series, the issue number two, where she's wearing the Black Panther cover that's become iconic. So many variants, um, you name it. People are chasing everything, sure, and rightfully so, because Black Panther is really a cornerstone character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I don't think that that's going to stop uh, with Chadwick Boseman's death. I know that that is so tragic. He is an amazing, amazing, was an amazing, amazing person, uh, an amazing actor, um, and such an integral part of everything that was going on in the MCU. Um, but certainly those of us who are comics heads and have read the stories kn immediately knew that like this didn't mean the end of Black Panther because there was a natural tie-in with Shuri taking that mantle. Um, so this is going to happen. I know that people that aren't comics fans, the kind of casual movie goer, they may have a hard time with this, um, but I know when they see the final product, they're going to get on board. Kudos to Ryan Coogler for making a quick pivot as he did. He was writing a movie for T'Challa, not aware of Chadwick Boseman's, you know, sickness when the news uh, of, of his death broke um they had to make an amazingly quick pivot to keep this movie on schedule so um including new casting just this week um for a, a potential major villain so a lot of excitement for that film and that's not all we're getting because mcu news is going rampant because now we've got a a new writer uh on board for deadpool 3 and the very first edition of Deadpool into the MCU, which is also popping Deadpool's first appearance and key issues. So definitely MCU spec kind of rules all when it comes to that secondary market. Yeah, I actually just rewatched Black Panther for like the 15th time mm -hmm. this weekend. Favorite part of that movie has got to be towards the beginning when they're in that apartment. And he's like, there's some great stones looking. And he's like, should I open it? And he's like, they won't knock again. <laughs> Best line of the movie. But that's going to make us transition over to the downward trends right now. And this is one that I enjoyed the series, but it still doesn't have a lot of buzz. But we're talking about Iron Man 2020. But the year 2020 in the title might have killed it. Who knows? Yeah. And I, and I think the real reason why this has been talked about a lot this week, specifically on Twitter. Twitter has really been the social media platform to talk about Iron Man 2020 has been the Marvel 616 documentary series that just hit um, Disney+. Plus. If you haven't seen it, I was blown away by how good it was. Now, I'm a Marvel fan, um, so I knew I was going to like it. But, I mean, just incredible. It, I will say this. I'll say this to my brother, Brian. We all get like this, right? We get burnt out sometimes with comics. 
This is one of those things, no matter what's going on, we're going to talk about things in the downward part that can, can burn you out. Um, this was one of those reinvigorating, this is why I love comics shows. Um, but one of the episodes was about the Marvel method, the long fame style of writing uh, by, you know, Stan Lee and, and how and he let the kind of the artists direct things um, and how Dan Slott is the last remaining writer who uses this method. Now they made a literal joke of him the entire time of how he never turns anything in on time. And even within the one hour documentary, he has to go get a co-writer to finish Iron Man 2020 number one. Um, but it really kind of brought to light some of the problems with the Marvel method and then brought up everybody's questions about, well, was Iron Man 2020 good? And it seemed like people didn't really love it. Um, and then furthermore, um, I think Dan Slott gets picked on a lot. He gets a bad rap. I think he's written some iconic runs. Some's um, deserved. But some is some deserved. Some are good. And, they, well, and that's the thing is this documentary didn't help because it, it's one of those things, even though I, I definitely think he was playing into the joke because, you know, somebody uh, tweeted me and said, like, they couldn't believe that Dan Slott would let them, like, rat like that that they would do that to him like make a joke of him but i was like there's no way he's not in on the joke like he's got he had to take part in it um but yeah it did open the door for people on social media to be like well maybe that's why this comic that i didn't like was bad or this comic that i didn't like was bad and then people started looking into how many times he's had to bring in a co-writer or things like that so um you know it it's interesting iron man 2020 was a very hyped release that didn't ever achieve the hype but honestly it's a b character excuse me let's be honest it's a d character that um is a is a version of a b character who only became an a character because of movies um and has never been an a character as far as sales in comics um and is now you know put into this place largely because of the coincidence of it being actually 2020. Um, so, you know, this was more, I think, a victim of circumstance, but either way, it was a topic of discussion this week. Uh, and if you do like Iron Man 2020, there's some great artwork for the variants. Well, these books are cheap. They're out there. The variants are well under ratio. Um, I definitely, we talk a lot about these sales that you're going to see, especially this week with Black Friday. Um, Iron Man 2020 is one I expect to see on those type of sales. Yeah, I, I liked it. I didn't love it, but it took my mind off of reality, put it that way, enough to, to, to read it through. But we're going to switch over to another one that's down right now. Is we're talking about Pokemon comics. Pokemon cards are hot, but the comics aren't so much. Yeah, so their comics are down, and they've always been down. Um, but we're going to talk, you're going to hear us talk about this. Um, we're going to talk about it on a couple shows uh, over the next several probably weeks. I was about to tell you, I don't, I don't remember them being up, but yeah, they've, they've really never been up. Um, they, they came out, um, I believe from Viz comics um, who had a lot of those similar types of properties um, in the day. Um, but the thing about it is you mentioned it. Pokemon cards have never been hotter as hot as sports cards are right now. Um, Pokemon cards are on even another level. And I think that that's one of those things that always seems to cross and translate over. Um, so I, I certainly think Hollywood's going to be paying attention. Um, Detective Pikachu was a successful movie. Um, but I think that without a doubt, Hollywood has to be seeing what's going on and go, well, you know, I do think that adults will clearly pay for this property um, because this is one they believe in. Kids obviously love it. Um, so you can kind of connect those across those generations, which is difficult. Another thing we're going to talk about. Um, so with all of that being said, and the fact that like Target can't keep Pokemon cards in stock, um, I, I look at the comics and go, they're literally going for nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. Um, and you got to think about how tough it must be to have like nine eighths of these books because these were read by kids. There was no adult on Pokemon when those came out. This wasn't the type of property your parents understood. Um, so, yeah, I still don't. <laughs> right, My kids right. Love it. Right, and I was the older brother. We were both. Yeah, we were at that age where it was like it was. It was after us. Um, 
but yeah, my, my younger, younger brothers, I've got, I've got three younger brothers. My youngest brother is 13 years younger than me. Um, and so I've seen all of that stuff kind of come up, uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh and all of that. Um, but that was, yeah, that wasn't my time. But even Power Rangers was really after us. We were older. Um, so, you know, that's one of those things, it, it, but we, we've, we've really built this channel on respecting fandoms and noticing these trends and not judging people's fandoms. You want to be a My Little Pony fan? I'm not going to judge you. They're going to, they're going to judge me for not judging you, but I'm not going to judge you. You want to be a Pokemon fan? I'm not going to judge you. But I look at these comics and I say, if you've got some high grade ones, if you can find some high grade, especially that first comic, that first appearance, I, I'd pay attention to that. I recently was having a conversation uh, about licensed properties with a major, major publisher. And I brought up my theory about Pokemon and the person said, I would love to get the license for Pokemon. Um, so I think it's only a matter of time before some comic company does get the license for Pokemon. And if we're talking about it in the future, um, certainly those back issues are going to come into play. So you can call me crazy, but a savvy investor has got to get in early. So down is always, not always, but can be a good buying opportunity. Yeah, there's definitely plenty of material to choose from there to, to make some great books. I mean, especially some of the stuff that's successful now for other series, but it's one to keep an eye on for sure. But the last one I want to talk about down on the downward trend, this is almost more of a talking point that we wanted to bring up. And Jack and I both agree that we I understand it, but it's just something that kind of definitely down and does affect comics. And we're talking about that generational divide within comics. I think this, we talk about this all the time, my main comic collecting is from my nostalgia. I like to buy back nostalgia. And within that, people's nostalgia is different, especially through the generations. But we got generation divide in comics. You want to talk about it a little bit more, Jack? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's It's been the top thing on my mind um, in, when it comes to the comic industry because uh, what we try to do here is we really try to try to provide something to the comic industry, right? We try to offer something. And um, I, I've listened to a lot of people who take the positions that, you know, are in the position that we are. They have YouTube channels who run websites who, um, you know, who are maybe in a position of authority or a, a, a at least a, a, a um, appearance of so. And a lot of times, and we're all guilty of this, myself included, right? We, we put our, our own self, like you said, you know, you mentioned what you're into. We put our own self into our opinions. Um, but it's one of That's those things. Opinion is, bro. Right, right. <laughs> which you, which you, you're, but you're right, though. But that you're right, though. Um, that's what we do. We we put ourselves into it and we form our opinion. But and but you're right. It's an opinion, um, and we don't always respect the opinion of others, especially generationally. Um, and if you really think like we, one of the oldest tropes in the world is the whole parents don't understand, right? There's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. Your parents didn't understand you. You don't understand your kids. Um, your, your grandparents didn't understand your parents. It, we all understand that concept, but for some reason within comics, we have a hard time with that. So we talk about things like Peach Momoko being the hottest thing in the world. And, you know, certain of us who come from an era where like line art, was the most respected form of I like some don't like digital art exactly exactly you know and i defend a lot of times as a devil's advocate the the younger generation's you know desires and beliefs in, uh, uh, about the industry um and i think people mistake it like that's mine um and i like peach Momoko. But she's she wouldn't be in my top ten favorite artists. Um, it, my favorite are the '90s artists. My Todd McFarlane is my all time favorite. Um, I, Jim Lee is uh, you know probably my second favorite, and Rob Liefeld would be in my top five. So like that's my era. That's what I love, and I understand somebody who's a fan of Silver Age books who might criticize those artists because they certainly did in the time in that in the in, when I was young in the '90s. Certainly, that's a largely um those some of the problems that they had with marvel um was that whole generational divide but we're seeing that with collecting so like um and it, some of the some of the things like the newer collectors come in and they they start asking certain questions like well why is this book a first appearance when a character actually appeared in an issue before 
Um, and then that whole cameo versus first appearance debate comes up. Um, new collectors come into the market and go, well, if the variant is worth more because it's lower printed, then why wouldn't I want the second or third print even more because it's even more lower printed than the variant? And the old school collector is like, well, yeah, but it was it's dated later. And it's like, yeah, but the issue numbers. The same. And then th neither one's right or wrong. It's just, again, it's an opinion. And the market is always going to change as time, over time, the collecting habits of people are, are always, are always going to change. I mean, you wouldn't have thought 60, 70 years ago to be backing and boarding your comics, but now it would be a sin not to. Um, so these things are always going to happen. There's always going to be these, these divides, but I hate to see us take such judgmental stances in either direction uh, about um, there's nothing wrong with a golden age collector loving golden age books, loving horror, loving um, romance, uh, loving Western. There's nothing wrong with that. And that doesn't mean you're out of touch. That doesn't mean, I mean, that's you loving and being into what you're into. But conversely, there is also nothing wrong with that younger collector who, you know, Batman doesn't do it for them. They, they're, Batman was their dad's character. Yeah, and, they want Naomi. You know, and that's what they want. Or, or, or this, this increasing population of female comic reader that yeah, wants to be represented by uh, Jessica Cruz um, and by uh, Sojourner from Far Sector. Um, that they want and will value these characters. Um, and it's very easy to always blame it on speculators, right? That's the easy thing. Well, speculators are doing this. Speculators are making this pop. But really, it's, it's new collectors. It's young collectors. It's, it's a different opinion. Um, because at the end of the day, whether you're buying your Silver Age books because you think they're going to go up in value, or whether you're buying the brand new modern book because you think it's going to go up in value, you're speculating either way. If you're buying them to keep them, you're collecting either way. It's all the same thing. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things. It, the nice thing would be able to say, why can't we all just get along? Um, but that's not going to happen. And we've seen it outside in our real world with politics and everything else. People have a hard time seeing others' perspectives. But I just, if you pull anything from this, you can tell me in the comic comment section that I'm crazy. But is before you go in, you're like, I don't understand this Peach Momoko thing. Everybody's nuts. It's a cash grab. Just understand that there, as much as you may not understand it, every, there's clearly thousands of people who love her work and think it's amazing. Um, and, and I, I can't deny that. I have to respect that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we talk, we, we base our own opinions on it. I've, I've given my opinion of yep. me not liking stuff and I fully, I, I don't shy away from it. I like what I like, but I also respect, we said it here. We respect people's fandoms. I like what other, you know, I like what I like, but I don't disregard what you like because I'm not going to sit there. I won't be one of those people that say, oh, you know, that's not going to be worth anything or that's, you know, these these people are stupid. Stupid's a strong word, but, you know, they disagree with you and then they put a value on it. Comics is more than just value. People are buying what they like and you never know. You don't have a crystal ball that knows what something's going to be worth, what something's right. not going to be worth. And, you know, some people sit there and say, oh, these new people are ignorant. They're buying up all these later printings. Well, I might not agree with it, but I'm not going to knock them for doing it. And what's ignorant on top of it is when they disagree with it, the only argument they have, especially if we talk about it, is, oh, they're pump and dumping. They're talking about this book. We're not pump and dumping. I don't have any books to sell. I'm not selling those books. We're talking about the opinions. We're talking about respecting people's fandoms. We're talking about buy what you like. We've said it a thousand times on here. You might say, oh, that's just a cheap way out. It's not because that's what we do on this channel. I don't care if there's value to it or not. I like comics. That's what I'm in for. And I like other people that like to read comics. I'm not going to berate you because you buy something I disagree with. I'll tell you I disagree with it, but hey, buy what you like. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Super Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Do good, do great, and they talk bad on you. No mean, no face, because they're not factual. No, no, no. I won't stay too long here. I'm just passing through. I might hit the bank and get a bag or two. My mama asked me why you got that cash room.